Founding Fathers of the United States, Wikipedia Audio The Founding Fathers of the United States were individuals from the 13 colonies in North America who led the American Revolution against the Kingdom of Great Britain and contributed to the establishment of the United States of America. Historian Richard B. Morris in 1973 identified the following seven figures as the key founding fathers, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and George Washington. Adams, Jefferson, and Franklin were members of the Committee of Five that drafted the Declaration of Independence. Hamilton, Madison, and Jay were authors of the Federalist Papers, advocating ratification of the Constitution. The constitutions drafted by Jay and Adams for their respective states of New York and Massachusetts were heavily relied upon when creating language for the U.S. Constitution. Jay, Adams, and Franklin negotiated the Treaty of Paris that would end the American Revolutionary War. Washington was Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army and was President of the Constitutional Convention. All held additional important roles in the early government of the United States, with Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Madison serving as President. Jay was the nation's first Chief Justice and Hamilton was the first Secretary of the Treasury. While Franklin was America's most senior diplomat and later the governmental leader of Pennsylvania. The term Founding Fathers is sometimes used to refer to the signers of the embossed version of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Signers should not to be confused with the term Framers. The framers are defined by the National Archives as those 55 individuals who were appointed to be delegates to the 1787 Constitutional Convention and took part in drafting the proposed Constitution of the United States. Of the 55 framers, only 39 were signers of the Constitution. Two further groupings of founding fathers include one those who signed the Continental Association, a trade ban and one of the colonists' first collective volleys protesting British control and the intolerable acts in 1774 or two those who signed the Articles of Confederation, the first U.S. constitutional document. Background The phrase Founding Fathers is a 20th century appellation, coined by Warren G. Harding in 1916. Prior to, and during the 19th century, they were referred to as simply the Fathers. The term has been used to describe the founders and first settlers of the original royal colonies. The First Continental Congress met briefly in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1774 consisting of 56 delegates from 12 of the 13 colonies that became the United States of America. Among them was George Washington, who would soon be drawn out of military retirement to command the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. Also in attendance was Patrick Henry, and John Adams, who like all delegates were elected by their respective colonial assemblies. Other delegates included Samuel Adams from Massachusetts, John Dickinson from Pennsylvania and New York's John Jay. This Congress in addition to formulating appeals to the British Crown, established the Continental Association to administer boycott actions against Britain. Massachusetts, Adams, New York, Jay, Pennsylvania, Franklin, Morris, Virginia, Washington, Jefferson, Madison. When the Second Continental Congress convened on May 10, 1775, it essentially reconstituted the First Congress. Many of the same 56 delegates who attended the first meeting participated in the second. New arrivals included Benjamin Franklin and Robert Morris of Pennsylvania. 
John Hancock of Massachusetts, and John Witherspoon of New Jersey. Hancock was elected Congress president two weeks into the session when Peyton Randolph was recalled to Virginia to preside over the House of Burgesses. Thomas Jefferson replaced Randolph in the Virginia Congressional Delegation. The Second Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence. Witherspoon was the only active clergyman to sign the Declaration. He also signed the Articles of Confederation and attended the New Jersey Convention that ratified the Federal Constitution. The newly founded country of the United States had to create a new government to replace the British Parliament. The U.S. adopted the Articles of Confederation, a declaration that established a national government with a one-house legislature. Its ratification by all 13 colonies gave the Second Congress a new name, the Congress of the Confederation which met from 1781 to 1789. The Constitutional Convention took place during the summer of 1787, in Philadelphia. Although the convention was called to revise the Articles of Confederation, the intention from the outset for some including James Madison and Alexander Hamilton was to create a new frame of government rather than amending the existing one. The delegates elected George Washington to preside over the convention. The result of the convention was the United States Constitution. The Founding Fathers represented a cross-section of 18th century U.S. leadership. Almost all of them were well-educated men of means who were leaders in their communities. Many were also prominent in national affairs. Virtually everyone had taken part in the American Revolution, at least 29 had served in the Continental Army, most of them in positions of command. Scholars have examined the collective biography of them as well as the signers of the Declaration and the Constitution. Many of the Founding Fathers attended or held degrees from the colonial colleges, most notably Columbia known at the time as King's College, Princeton originally known as the College of New Jersey, Harvard College, the College of William and Mary, Yale College, and University of Pennsylvania. Some had previously been homeschooled or obtained early instruction from private tutors or academies. Others had studied abroad. Ironically, Benjamin Franklin who had little formal education himself would ultimately establish the College of Philadelphia based on European models, Penn would have the first medical school in the 13 colonies where another founder, Benjamin Rush would eventually teach. With a limited number of professional schools established in the U.S., Founders also sought advanced degrees from traditional institutions in England and Scotland such as the University of Edinburgh and University of St. Andrews. England, Robert Morris, Ireland, Butler, Fitzsimmons, McHenry and Patterson, West Indies, Hamilton, Scotland Wilson and Witherspoon. Several like John Jay, James Wilson, John Williams, and George With were trained as lawyers through apprenticeships in the colonies while a few trained at the Inns of Court in London. Franklin, Washington, John Williams, and Henry Wisner had little formal education and were largely self-taught or learned through apprenticeship. As many as 35 including Adams, Hamilton, and Jay were trained as lawyers though not all of them practiced law. Some had also been local judges, Washington trained as a land surveyor before he became commander of a small militia, at the time of the convention, 13 men were merchants, Blount, Broom, Clymer, Dayton, Fitzsimmons, Shields, Gilman, Gorham, Langdon, Robert Morris, Pierce, Sherman, and Wilson, Broom and few were small farmers, three had retired from active economic endeavors, Franklin, McHenry, and Mifflin, 
Franklin and Williamson were scientists, in addition to their other activities, McClurg. McHenry, Rush, and Williamson were physicians, Johnson and Witherspoon were college presidents. Interesting Facts and Commonalities Some of the Founding Fathers were natives of the Thirteen Colonies. At least nine were immigrants. Many of them had moved from one state to another. Eighteen had already lived, studied, or worked in more than one state or colony, Baldwin, Bassett, Bedford, Davy, Dickinson, Few, Franklin, Ingersoll, Hamilton, Livingston, Alexander Martin, Luther Martin, Mercer, Gouverneur Morris, Robert Morris, Reed, Sherman, and Williamson. Several others had studied or traveled abroad. The Founding Fathers practiced a wide range of high and middle status occupations, and many pursued more than one career simultaneously. They did not differ dramatically from the Loyalists, except they were generally younger and less senior in their professions. Historian Caroline Robbins in 1977 examined the status of the signers of the Declaration of Independence and concluded, Several of the Founding Fathers had extensive national, state, local and foreign political experience prior to the adoption of the Constitution in 1787. Some had been diplomats. Several had been members of the Continental Congress or elected president of that body. Education Colonial colleges attended Nearly all of the 55 Constitutional Convention delegates had some experience in colonial and state government, and the majority had held county and local offices. Those who lacked national congressional experience were Bassett, Blair, Brearley, Broom, Davy, Dayton, Alexander Martin, Luther Martin, Mason, McClurg, Patterson, Charles Pinckney, Strong, and Yates. Benjamin Franklin began his political career as a city councilman and then Justice of the Peace in Philadelphia. He was next elected to the Pennsylvania Assembly and was sent by them to London as a colonial agent which helped hone his diplomatic skills. Jefferson, Adams, Jay, and Franklin all acquired significant political experience as ministers to countries in Europe. John Adams and John Jay drafted the constitutions of their respective states, Massachusetts and New York, and successfully navigated them through to adoption. J. Thomas Mifflin and Nathaniel Gorham had served as president of the Continental Congress, Gouverneur Morris had been a member of the New York Provincial Congress, John Dickinson, Franklin, Langdon and Rutledge had been governors or presidents of their states, Robert Morris had been a member of the Pennsylvania Assembly and president of Pennsylvania's Committee of Safety. He was also a member of the Committee of Secret Correspondence, Roger Sherman had served in the Connecticut House of Representatives, Elbridge Gerry was a member of the Massachusetts Provincial Congress, Carroll served in the Maryland Senate, with s first exposure to politics was as a member of Virginia's House of Burgesses, Reed s entry into the political arena was as a commissioner of the town of Charlestown, Maryland. Clymer was a member of the Philadelphia Committee of Safety and the Continental Congress, Wilson S. Time as a member of the Continental Congress in 1776 was his introduction to colonial politics. Advanced Degrees and Apprenticeships Doctors of Medicine Theology Legal Apprenticeships Self-taught or little formal education Franklin T. Lambert has examined the religious affiliations and beliefs of some of the founders. Of the 55 delegates to the 1787 Constitutional Convention, 
28 were Anglicans, 21 were Protestants, and 2 were Roman Catholics. Among the Protestant delegates to the Constitutional Convention, 8 were Presbyterians, 7 were Congregationalists, 2 were Lutherans, 2 were Dutch Reformed, and 2 were Methodists. Abigail Adams, advisor, first lady and mother of a president, Ethan Allen, military and political leader in Vermont, Richard Allen, African-American bishop, John Bartram, botanist, horticulturist and explorer, Egbert Benson, politician from New York, Elias Bodino, New Jersey delegate to Continental Congress, Aaron Burr, Vice President under Jefferson, George Rogers Clark, Army General, George Clinton, New York Governor and Vice President of the U.S., Tench Cox, Economist in the Continental Congress. William Richardson Davy, Delegate to the Constitutional Convention, and Governor of North Carolina, Albert Gallatin, Politician and Treasury Secretary, Horatio Gates, Army General, Nathaniel Green, Army General, Nathan Hale, Captured U.S. Soldier Executed in 1776, Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton, Wife of Alexander Hamilton, James Iredell, Advocate for Constitution, Judge, John Paul Jones, Navy Captain, Henry Knox, Army General, Secretary of War, Tadeusz Kao, Siasko, Polish Army General, Gilbert du Motier, Marquis de Lafayette, French Army General, Henry Lee III, Army Officer and Virginia Governor, Robert R. Livingston, Diplomat and Jurist, William McClay, Pennsylvania Politician and U.S. Senator, Dolly Madison, Spouse of President James Madison, John Marshall, Fourth Chief Justice of the United States, George Mason, Revolutionary Writer, CO Father of the Bill of Rights, Philip Mazzi, Italian Physician, Merchant and Author, James Monroe, Fifth President of the United States, Daniel Morgan, Military Hero and Virginia. Congressman James Otis Jr., Massachusetts lawyer and politician, Thomas Paine, author of Common Sense, Andrew Pickens, Army General and South Carolina Congressman, Timothy Pickering, U.S. Secretary of State from Massachusetts, Israel Putnam, Army General, Edmund Randolph, First United States Attorney General, Second Secretary of State, Jean-Baptiste Donatien de Vimeur, Comte de Rochambeau, French Army General, Haim Solomon, Financier and Spy for Continental Army, Thomas Sumter, SC Military Hero and Congressman Friedrich Wilhelm von Steuben, Prussian Officer, Joseph Warren, Doctor, Revolutionary Leader, Mercy Otis Warren, Political writer, Anthony Wayne, Army General and politician, Noah Webster, writer, lexicographer, educator, Thomas Willing, banker, Payne Wingate, oldest survivor, Continental Congress. A few prominent founding fathers were anti clerical Christians, such as Thomas Jefferson, who constructed the Jefferson Bible, and Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin founded the University of Pennsylvania, while Jefferson founded the University of Virginia, Benjamin Rush founded Dickinson College and Franklin College, as well as the College of Physicians of Philadelphia, the oldest medical society in America. Alexander Hamilton founded the New York Post, as well as the United States Coast Guard. Henry Knox helped found the Society of the Cincinnati in 1783. The society was predicated on service as an officer in the Revolutionary War and heredity.
Members included Washington, Hamilton, and Burr. Other founders like Sam Adams, John Adams, Franklin, and Jay criticized the formation of what they considered to be an elitist body and threat to the Constitution. Franklin would later accept an honorary membership though Jay declined. Historian Greg L. Fraser argues that the leading founders were neither Christians nor deists, but rather supporters of a hybrid theistic rationalism. The papers of Alexander Hamilton, the selected papers of John Jay at Columbia University, the papers of Thomas Jefferson at Princeton University, the papers of James Madison at University of Virginia, the Washington Papers at University of Virginia, the Franklin Papers at Yale University. Demographics the Faiths of the Founding Fathers is a book that discusses the religion held by the Founding Fathers, written in 2006 by historian of U.S. religion David L. Holmes. One of the greatest contradictions of the Founding Fathers was their disunity with regard to slavery at a time that they were seeking liberty for themselves. This hypocrisy was as evident in the North as it was in the South for many wealthy Northerners owned domestic slaves. In her study of Thomas Jefferson, historian Annette Gordon Reed emphasizes this irony, others of the founders held slaves, but no other founder drafted the Charter for Freedom, in addition to Jefferson, George Washington, John Jay, and many other of the Founding Fathers practiced slavery but were also conflicted by the institution which many saw as immoral and politically divisive. Franklin though he was a key founder of the Pennsylvania Abolition Society originally owned slaves whom he later manumitted. John Jay would try unsuccessfully to abolish slavery as early as 1777 in the state of New York but was overruled. He nonetheless founded the New York Manumission Society in 1785, for which Hamilton became an officer. They and other members of the society founded the African Free School in New York City, to educate the children of free blacks and slaves. It was not until Jay was governor of New York in 1798, that he signed into law a gradual abolition law, fully ending slavery as of 1827. He freed his own slaves in 1798. Alexander Hamilton opposed slavery as his experiences in life left him very familiar with slavery and its effect on slaves and on slaveholders, although he did negotiate slave transactions for his wife's family, the Schuylers. John Adams, Samuel Adams, and Thomas Paine never owned slaves. Slaves and slavery are mentioned only indirectly in the 1787 Constitution. For example, Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3 prescribes that three-fifths of all other persons are to be counted for the apportionment of seats in the House of Representatives and direct taxes. Additionally, in Article 4, Section 2, Clause 3, slaves are referred to as persons held in service or labor. The Founding Fathers, however, did make important efforts to contain slavery. Many northern states had adopted legislation to end or significantly reduce slavery during and after the American Revolution. In 1782 Virginia passed a manumission law that allowed slave owners to free their slaves by will or deed. As a result, thousands of slaves were manumitted in Virginia. Thomas Jefferson in 1784, proposed to ban slavery in all the Western territories, which failed to pass Congress by one vote. Partially following Jefferson's plan, Congress did ban slavery in the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, for lands north of the Ohio River.
the international slave trade was banned in all states except South Carolina, by 1800. Finally in 1807, President Jefferson called for and signed into law a federally enforced ban on the international slave trade throughout the U.S. and its territories. It became a federal crime to import or export a slave. However, the domestic slave trade was allowed, for expansion, or for diffusion of slavery into the Louisiana Territory. In the winter and spring of 1786, 1787, 12 of the 13 states chose a total of 74 delegates to attend the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. 19 delegates chose not to accept election or attend the debates, for example, Patrick Henry of Virginia thought that state politics were far more interesting and important than national politics, though during the ratification controversy of 1787, 1788 he claimed, I smelled a rat. Rhode Island did not send delegates because of its politicians' suspicions of the convention delegates' motivations. As the colony was founded by Roger Williams as a sanctuary for Baptists, Rhode Island's absence at the convention in part explains the absence of Baptist affiliation among those who did attend. Of the 55 who did attend at some point, no more than 38 delegates showed up at one time. Most of the founding fathers married and had children. Many of their spouses, like Eliza Schuyler Hamilton, Martha Washington, Abigail Adams, Sarah Livingston J., Dolly Madison, Mary White Morris and Catherine Alexander Dewar were strong women and made significant contributions of their own to the fight for liberty. Occupations Sherman fathered the largest family, 15 children by two wives. At least nine married more than once. Four were lifelong bachelors. Many of the delegates also had children conceived illegitimately. George Washington, the father of our country, had no biological descendants. The National Archives and Records Administration also known as NARA, defines U.S. founding documents, or charters of freedom, as the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. These original instruments which represent the philosophy of the United States are housed in Washington, D.C. in the NARA Rotunda. The Library of Congress further identifies the Articles of Confederation, also preserved at NARA, as a primary U.S. document. The Articles of Confederation served as the first Constitution of the United States until its replacement by the present Constitution on March 4, 1789. Finances Signatories of the Continental Association, Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, and the United States Constitution Subsequent events in the lives of the Founding Fathers after the adoption of the Constitution were characterized by success or failure, reflecting the abilities of these men as well as the vagaries of fate. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Madison served in highest U.S. office of President. J. would be appointed as Chief Justice of the United States and later elected to two terms as Governor of New York. Prior Political Experience Religion Ownership of Slaves and Position on Slavery Seven suffered serious financial reversals that left them in or near bankruptcy. Robert Morris spent three of the last years of his life imprisoned following bad land deals. Two, Blount and Dayton, were involved in possibly treasonous activities. Yet, as they had done before the convention, most of the group continued to render public service, particularly to the new government they had helped to create. 
Many of the Founding Fathers were under 40 years old at the time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776, James Armistead Lafayette was 15, Marquis de Lafayette was 18, Alexander Hamilton was 19, Aaron Burr was 20, Gouverneur Morris and Betsy Ross were 24. The oldest were Benjamin Franklin, 70, and Samuel Whitmore, 81. Secretary Charles Thompson lived to the age of 94. Johnson died at 92. John Adams lived to the age of 90. A few? Franklin, J., Jefferson, Madison, Hugh Williamson, and George Wythe? Lived into their 80s. Approximately 16 died in their 70s. 21 in their 60s, 8 in their 50s, and 5 in their 40s. Three were killed in duels. Friends and political adversaries John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on the same day. July 4, 1826 The last remaining founders, also called the last of the Romans, lived well into the 19th century. The following men and women are also recognized by many as having been founders of the United States based upon their significant contributions to the formation of American nation and democracy. Several founding fathers were instrumental in establishing schools and societal institutions that still exist today. Articles and books by 21st century historians combined with the digitization of primary sources like handwritten letters continue to contribute to an encyclopedic body of knowledge about the Founding Fathers. Ron Chernow won the Pulitzer Prize for his biography of George Washington. His best-selling book about Alexander Hamilton inspired the blockbuster musical of the same name. Joseph J. Ellis, according to Ellis, the concept of the Founding Fathers of the U.S. emerged in the 1820s as the last survivors died out. Ellis says the Founders, or the Fathers, comprised an aggregate of semi-sacred figures whose particular accomplishments and singular achievements were decidedly less important than their sheer presence as a powerful but faceless symbol of past greatness. For the generation of national leaders coming of age in the 1820s and 1830s? Men like Andrew Jackson, Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, and John C. Calhoun? The founders represented a heroic but anonymous abstraction whose long shadow fell across all followers and whose legendary accomplishments defied comparison. We can win no laurels in a war for independence. Webster acknowledged in 1825. Earlier and worthier hands have gathered them all. Nor are there places for us, the founders of states. Our fathers have filled them. But there remains to us a great duty of defense and preservation. Joanne B. Freeman Freeman's area of expertise is the life and legacy of Alexander Hamilton as well as political culture of the revolutionary and early national eras. Freeman has documented the often opposing visions of the Founding Fathers as they tried to build a new framework for governance, regional distrust, personal animosity, accusation, suspicion, implication, and denouncement. This was the tenor of national politics from the outset. Annette Gordon-Reed is an American historian and Harvard Law School professor. She is noted for changing scholarship on Thomas Jefferson regarding his relationship with Sally Hemings and her children. She has studied the challenges facing the Founding Fathers particularly as it relates to their position and actions on slavery. She points out the central dilemma at the heart of American democracy, the desire to create a society based on liberty and equality that yet does not extend those privileges to all. Jack N. Rakov, Thomas Jefferson Peter S. Onyev, Thomas Jefferson 
Founders Online is a searchable database of over 178,000 documents authored by or addressed to George Washington, John Jay, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and James Madison. The Founding Fathers were portrayed in the Tony Award-winning musical 1776, a stage production about the debates over and eventual adoption of the Declaration of Independence, the popular performance was later turned into the 1972 film. More recently, several of the Founding Fathers, Hamilton, Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Lawrence, and Burr, were reimagined in Hamilton, an acclaimed production about the life of Alexander Hamilton, with music, lyrics, and book by Lynn Manuel Miranda. The show was inspired by the 2004 biography Alexander Hamilton by historian Ron Cherno. The rap musical won 11 Tony Awards. In their 2015 children's book, the Founding Fathers author Jonah Winter and illustrator Barry Blitt categorized 14 leading patriots into two teams based on their contributions to the formation of America, the Varsity Squad and the Junior Varsity Squad. President of Pennsylvania, Ambassador to France Attendance at Conventions Spouses and Children Charters of Freedom and Historical Documents of the United States Post-Constitution Life Youth and Longevity Founders who were not signatories or delegates Legacy Institutions formed by Founders Scholarship on the Founders Living Historians whose focus is the Founding Fathers Noted Collections of the Founding Fathers In Stage and Film Children's Books Notes